Hi, hi. Today is day five of our Europe Next Inventory Management um, Exploration and Study, uh, or rather training, you can call it or consider it however you want to consider it. And today we are going to be looking at setting up the units of measure and how they work uh, in, in the purchase and sales documents. So uh, go back to my item. You remember we created this one plus 10 T here. And to set up the units of measure, you remember the first thing that we had here was numbers. Yeah. So when we have, for example, this form, you buy, you will sell them in numbers, of course, but maybe when you're buying them, you're buying them, let's assume in cartons, for example. So we can go to purchasing because we need to buy them first. Let me see whether we have a carton here. We don't have a carton as a unit of measure. So we can go ahead and create one. So that's again the beauty of European X. Does not limit you uh, in the number of, or rather the type or the units of measure that you can use. You can even create yours if they are not existing. So the first thing you are supposed to do in the details is to make sure that you have the default unit of measure here, which we have numbers. And then in the purchasing, you need to enter here. You are buying the the item you are selling in what unit of measure. And I can see here that we are buying our phones in cartons yeah and then we go to sales and we need to tell the system we are going to be selling in which units of measure and that is going to be numbers the same as what we have here so that's numbers then we can save that once we are done with that we need to go back here in the details go to units of measure here and we need to enter those two so that is basically the conversion how do they convert and of course the numbers are one that's okay you need to add another row and add a carton and say that in, in one carton, there are, let's say, 24 mobile phones, okay? So you can do that. This is very important. And then you save. Once you do that, you are done basically with the setup of the units of measure. What you need to do now is to go to something like a purchase order so that you can see how they look. And before that, maybe I can view, first of all, the stock ledger. And we are going to see here that we have an in quantity of 10 uh, this 10 of course these are individuals so we need to go ahead and make a purchase of another one so purchase order and then i'll create a purchase order oh my goodness i don't have a supplier i can create one quickly now let me say android suppliers maybe and I save it required by you can see this is required in a week's time and then here we are going to select our phone and you can see that the system is intelligent already when we put uh, the item here it knows that you are going to be buying in cartons you see that and then you can see that one carton let's say uh, we said this is i'm doing my math here but you see you are supposed to have this in this is going to be two zero sixty four this is basically your buying price so don't see me doing things here and then you start panicking and let's say we are buying two cartons yeah so we are buying two cartons for the phone so those are going to be 48 mobile phones and then we go ahead and save it and we submit it remember this is a purchase order so we need to create a purchase receipt from it so that we can get it into our warehouse or our store and we just save and submit we don't change anything we don't need to change anything there once we have those if we go back now to our to our item and we look at the same item through the stock ledger we are going to see that we have 48 remember that we bought two cartons but you see the in quantity has already been converted to 48 and we don't have any out what if we want to see them in cartons you can come here you see where we have i include uom and do carton and you see that there is another column that will be added here so if we do that see this in quantity this is uh, this converted is this one this converted is two 
So basically this is 10 divided by 24, I believe. 10 divided by 24. Yeah, that is what gives you 0.417 because these are 10 out of the possible 24 that should be in a carton. So that is how you manage. And of course, when you are doing sales now, if for example, I go to sales order, sales, sales order, and I quickly spin up one here. Again, I don't have a customer. Maybe we can call this Catania. See, I'm the one buying and save. And then we come here and select our item. We are going to be selling a unit. Yeah. Delivery date, let's say, is today. We are selling one unit. So that, that this, again, the system fetches the selling price automatically because we saved it, remember, when we were, or, uh, we were, we were setting up the item. So we save and submit. And then we go to create and we create a delivery note because we need to deliver this item to our customer. Save it and then we go ahead and we submit. Now, when we do that, I want to still go back to item. I can look at it from there, but I want to do all these things from here. Uh, not there. I wanted to do a stock ledger. Now here, you notice that there is one, <coughs> excuse me, that has gone out. And the one that has gone out is a unit. It's not a carton. It's one number. So even if we do here uh, carton, you are going to notice carton. You're going to notice that this is what we have. Yeah. See this? This is the quantity rather here. This is the quantity that we have here. So just a second. Let me confirm something. One divided by okay so this one is what has uh, gone out and now you can see here that in the balance that we had here we had 10 when we added this 48 we had 58 we have sold one now we have 57 that is how we manage uoms in the in the chart of not rather in chart of accounts but in the in erp next so let me go back quickly again to item and all these things that we, we discussed here yesterday from when we had inventory and all these things we had topics we have topics in the future that are going to be covering all of this in detail remember we looked at the units of measure uh, uh, as just a field when we were we were we introduced the topic i think that was yesterday when we were looking at the creating and managing items but now everything that is within this item because ideally an item is what we refer to as inventory we are going to be exploring we have a total of about 24 units to cover and of course they may advance they may go keep growing depending on the feedback that i'm getting from the community or from the people that are learning so i would encourage you to subscribe to my channel so that you keep getting those updates as they come so see you tomorrow and tomorrow we are going to be looking at item attributes and their specifications